Hello, and welcome to the patch notes of patch 11009 of February 7th, 2022. Let's see what's new, guys. Let's go. Patch 11009 is releasing later this week, and so we wanted to provide a preview of what's to come for Age of Empires 4. In patch 11009, we are focused on responding to a number of items you, as the players, have brought to our attention. As always, we appreciate you for acting as our compass uh, as we continue to balance and improve. Uh, this time around, we're making some general changes to Siege to ensure there's sufficient counterplay. Yes! <laughs> Good! <laughs> My game against... Uh, this is gonna be on YouTube. I have a Siege-only game uh, challenge coming up very soon. It's gonna have aged very poorly. Anyway. Uh, to ensure there's sufficient counterplay, making changes to reduce animation cancelling's impact on rates of fire, to refocus uh, on high level strategy, and doing another pass on balance for a variety of our civilizations. Read on for the full list of patch notes, including in depth de developer descriptions of why these adjustments were made. Note upon updating to this patch, yada yada yada. And there's going to be a stream. Okay. In general, we've made improvements to the animation cancelling issues previously called out by players. We'll be keeping an eye out for your feedback to make additional adjustments in this area. But with this patch, units can no longer easily perform faster attacks. <laughs> no longer easily. Can it still be done hardly? Uh, then intended by issuing a move command after attacking to cancel the cooldown between hits. When playing Age of Empires 4, we want players to feel like a general and spend most of their time making important, high-level strategic decisions. There's more work we're doing to ensure that we fully meet this goal. To those that don't know what this is in reference to, units have a pre-swing and a backswing, and they have a damage point. I pre-swing, moment of connection is the damage point, the unit loses health, then I backswing. This looks natural for a unit to do, but it also feels unnatural for a player to issue a movement command to a unit that's in battle and for it not to listen immediately. Therefore, many developers create the allowance to interrupt the backswing animation to get on your way. If you give a command to a group of units to move away, you want them to listen. And what was happening is that this tendency can be used by players to interrupt the backswing and to issue another new movement command. So you're like, tuk, tuk, and then you move a bit, tuk, 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 and then you can have a faster attack speed. And the problem is no hard-coded minimum time between attacks. All the other things are good, but a small oversight with that. They're saying that they're gonna have fixed that. So that's great. Scouts, elephants, horsemen, knights are not gonna be abusing this anymore and are not gonna be able to uh, do uh, bonus damages in this way anymore. So that's gonna be great. So they're uh, removing animation cancel. Fix the bug where palisade walls could no longer be targeted. This is uh, unstarted roofs walls. They were invisible. They could only be targeted by attack ground mangonel. Trebuchet projectiles now deal area of effect damage when missing their intended target. Ooh, nice. Very good, very good. Reminds me of uh, games like Planetfall and XCOM where uh, when you miss, you can still hit yourself or an opponent uh, nearby with friendly fire. Of course, trebuchets will not have friendly fire. Age of Empires 4 does not have friendly fire mechanic. Uh, but at least it's going to hit something else now, potentially, which is uh, interesting. That's, that's a big buff to trebuchets. It's a big buff to the scatter projectile upgrade for English, if it works. Let's see if they fix that bug. Uh, and it's a buff to Wingard Palace. The landmark H4 for English. I've already been trying it. It's quite good actually compared to Berkshire Palace sometimes. Trebuchet is being better. It's going to be pretty big. Their accuracy is low. This means they will now deal splash damage much more effectively. And upgrades such as the English civilization's shattering projectiles are now much more powerful. Cool. Fix the bug where incendiary ships damage range increased significantly after researching the explosives tech. Okay, this is gonna nerf Rus on water maps a lot, where they are the best. That's great. Fix the bug where incendiary ships were exploding two or even more times in some cases. 
To keep the unit balanced, we've increased the explosion damage 300 to 400. Great <laughs> demo ship fix. So to be clear, demo ships were sometimes doing 500 damage, 300 baseline, 200 extra against buildings, which means you would need three demo ships to blow up a dock. But with some kind of clever mechanics and abusive mechanics, you were able to blow up a dock with one demo ship instead of three. Shift queuing extra commands and all that jazz. And yeah, that was a bit too good. So now demo ships are not going to be able to explode two or more times if this bug fix works as intended, which means you will still need three demo ships to blow up a dock with a number of many other uh, interactions, of course, changing. Scout cost increased from 60 to 70 food. Okay, I think that's fair. Uh, scouts are quite powerful. I think they're still undermade simply to serve their purpose of scouting, um, especially with a, an idle stables. I think having scouts all over the map can be quite good. And uh, of course, they also get abused for dock raids, uh, hybrid water uh, maps, uh, scout wars. Animation Council was a big part of that. I am slightly worried in a sense that uh, something that's broken, like mass scouts cheese or scout dock rush or scout outpost rush um, is getting double nerfed. So you always have to be careful with double or triple nerfs or in the case of Warcraft 3 Reforged with Night Elf, the Reforged patch, uh, 13 buffs to a certain strategy was done in a singular patch, 13 buffs. That's always scary because it is almost impossible to oversee if you have no game knowledge. Uh, what's going to happen and the result was that elf got quite good with mass tier one in warcraft 3. this is a double nerf to scouts um, it's going to be a nerf to professional scouts upgrade uh, to to Rus kind of uh, potentially to the mongol scout rush so all together yeah it will change some things but i think it's a small enough change not to be uh, super huge we like that there's additional utility to the scout besides just scouting it's got a generous health pool, carries animal carcasses, and provides an effective torch. And it has regen. However, at only 60 food cost, it's quite a bit cheaper than any other mi military unit. Targeting the cost has no effect on a player's initial scout, and is especially impactful for players making armies of this unit. Let's see how it goes. I'm sure they'll keep their finger on the pulse and see whether it's going to be a good or a bad change. Wow, fishing. This is an interesting topic. I just want to gather my thoughts for 10 seconds. I've been thinking about how to improve the relationship to fishing and docks. There are many different ideas out there from the community and myself, many different ideas. Uh, more expensive docks, later docks, less fast fish gathering rates, docks that can defend themselves like a town center, and, and a number of other changes. So let's see what they have settled on for now. We want finding a body of water full of fish to be an exciting opportunity. However, the gather rate of fishing boats was creating lopsided games with no comeback potential. This modest reduction... Okay, this time they give the thoughts before the change, see? I don't know what the reduction is. This modest reduction still makes fishing the waters valuable while opening up other strategic avenues for the player who isn't able to fully capitalize. As well, fish are intended to be a scarce resource a scarce resource like deer or sheep that provides a burst of food for a limited time changes to shore fish bringing the fish ship harvesting rate to shore fish down from 0.75 which is equal to deer down to 0.66 which if i'm not mistaken is equal to farms or berries that's a pretty big drop of uh, about what is this 12 11 12 percent uh, reduction shore fish reduced from 1000 to 500 food changes to deep fish fishing ship harvesting rate reduced from 1.1 to 1. oh the fishing ship in general has been reduced interesting very interesting uh, from farm berry. No, 0.75 is the deer gathering rate. 0.66 is either farm or berry, so quite a bit slower. And then fishing ships harvesting rate reduced from 1.1 to 1, and the food in deep sea fish reduced from 2k to 1k. This is a 12% reduction. Okay. Huh. 
Uh, wow. So fishing ships in general are 9% uh, slower and you gather 12% slower from shore fish it, for both villagers and fishing ships and there's half the amount of food. Berries are, okay, berries are 0.66 normally. Okay, so shore fish for boats are now like berries. And deep fish are now like, are still the, um, what's deep sea fishing rate? Yeah. Deep sea fish is still good, but it's a multiple nerf to, uh, for example, let's take the easiest example. On Black Forest, you typically go for about 14 to 15 fishing boats. Now, with exactly half the amount of food inside that backwater, taking it, let's say there's about eight shoreline fish on, on, on uh, Black Forest, and maybe you kill one of them. Let's say there's seven shoreline fish. That's 7,000 food, and there's always deep sea fish times three, that's 6,000. So normally you had 13,000 food, and now you're gonna have 6,500 food. Additionally, you're harvesting from it slower. So um, if you half your ships, you will not have half the gathering. You will have less than half the gathering. So before I found 14 to 15 ships to be about right, now, if you half it, you are going to have seven and a half. I would round that up to eight or nine, maybe even ten. Because although they are going to empty out, uh, you are harvesting slower and you still want it at a decent rate. So I'd say ten boats is still going to be correct on Black Forest. That's my prediction. And of course, other, other, uh, yeah. Other maps, it's going to be really dependent on the situation because there's more randomization outside of Black Forest. Siege, formation catch up speed reduced from 100% to 40. That's really good. <laughs> because we've all seen uh, spring ults being out of position, not in formation, and then one gets attacked and then you move them all away. And then because they want to like form a line or form a blob, uh, the furthest one to the enemy is uh, suddenly catching up with the rest and it's absolutely speeding at like 2.0 speed faster than a horseman. So they're going to have that catch up a lot slower. When units information reposition, they can get a speed bonus. This value maxes out at 40 for infantry and cavalry. However, siege units were moving much faster and this could make them difficult to chase down even with cavalry. Wow! So siege was actually using 100% move speed or more? in order to become a race car and for infantry cavalry it maxed out at a 40% speed bonus. Interesting. Maybe what was happening is that they all had a maximum speed of let's say 2.2 so that would take a horseman from 1.8 to 2.2. It would take an infantry from 1.3 to 1.7 but it would take a siege unit from 1 to 2.2 to or something. Like maybe it was maximizing. I don't know. Or I don't know exactly what, but obviously I don't know, but I saw it was very fast sometimes. Horseman, Camel Rider, Fire Lancer and Knight Torch bonus damage versus Siege doubled. Okay, that, I think that's good because these are all more supply dense. They cost more per supply and therefore it was found that Scouts, of course, have the best torch. They all carried the same torch before. Knights cost double of a horseman, and a horseman cost double of a scout. So you can see that the knight is four times less effective against siege. They still don't want to make knights 40. They don't want it to be completely down to cost, but all of them are going to get twice as good. Interesting. So cavalry is supposed to be the counter to siege, but it didn't work out that way. A good update so far. I'm really liking everything so far. Intended to counter siege weapons, their high mobility should facilitate the ability quickly to close the distance and destroy siege weapons. Cavalry are more expensive than infantry, so getting a critical mass to quickly kill siege weapons can be costly. Increasing cavalry torch damage versus siege weapons helps them shine in this anti-siege rule. Uh, knights and lancers are always the same, there's just different sifts that have different names for them for flare, chat. 
Bombard health reduced from 480 to 400. Okay, I think that's something we can all agree on. Bombard is like the best unit in the game for any Sif. Uh, it kills everything, building siege, units. And they're gonna get less health. See additional changes to a Chinese Sif specific Bombard health below. Ooh. We found the Bombard's high health meant that it was able to fight cast effectively versus too many types of units. Its primary role is anti-building. We're still concerned about the damage per shot of this unit and we'll be closely monitoring it is performance, its performance. Uh, yeah, well, this would have a really easy fix of just halving its damage and adding that back to anti-building damage. It's not that complicated if that's the problem. It could just get the spring on treatment. Siege weapons now also deal their bonus damage versus ships. Oh, that's good. So now you're going to be able to take back water much more easily. Oh, that's really, really good. Because the way to take back water if you've lost it was absolutely difficult, wasn't it? For, take, for instance, Boulder Bay, Chinese versus French. You lost the water war, right? They kill your docks. They park their hawks in front of your shore and the new patch will have patrol. So three hawks can cover the whole shore plenty of time. The way to get it back was make an outpost, eight range, out of the range of hawk, give it arrow slits, build one in front, in front, in front, in front, and then finally a dock. Uh, and it was so hard because outposts don't move and hawks do and they can kill villagers building outposts. And it was just, it was way too hard. Now you can get Springled. Springled does 20 damage to everything. It does 80... It does 100 extra damage to Siege, or is it 30? It's 30. 30 plus 90 against Siege, right? Now it's gonna do 30 plus 90 against Boats as well. That's 120 damage. Galleys have 550, 650 health. Dows have like 500 health. Hawks have 900 to 1000 health. So a Spring Ult is gonna be able to 10 shot Hawks easily, nine shot even. Uh, it's gonna be able to five shot uh, most Galleys three to four shot most uh, dows and, and, and junks or whatever. A junk will in fact take five shots, Chinese junk. That's, and a Springled has a range of uh, 10, more than every ship until uh, capital ships, like uh, Baochuan and Karak and so on. So now you're gonna be able to use Springolds and Bombards for that matter. Maybe even, yeah, Mangonels as well. Mangonels are going to be better. Nest of these are going to be better. They all have bonus damage as well. And uh, rams. <laughs> Did you guys know rams work against boats if you can get near enough? Uh, how much damage does a ram do? Maybe it only has building damage because it can't attack anything else. Wait, no, it can attack something else. Yeah, and culverins. Ooh, culverins are going to absolutely destroy ships as well. Interesting. All okay. right. Naval maps, naval units are so powerful versus land, it makes water maps hopeless after players docks are destroyed. This change is targeted at allowing siege weapons to trade blows with ships. This is going to make Boulder Bay a much better map. Mongolian Heights, um, Danube River. You're going to be able to eke out influence back over water if you've got siege units. Of course, I'm still wondering how good cavalry are really going to be anti-siege considering walling is still so good stone walls and wooden walls because cavalry can't get past that so we'll have to wait and see how that goes because you know but there's more changes let's keep going adjustments made across the board to reduce siege move speed Ooh, siege is meant to be lumbering slow and powerful currently the power level of siege is there but it is often too difficult to pick off when repositioning or retreating this change is going to be aimed at adding more risk and strategy to movement and repositioning of siege equipment. Whoa! That's a buff to wonders, no? <laughs> four on four maps are going to feel really big when you're trying to get your death ball blob of 15 bombards across the map trying to snipe your opponent's wonder. Bombard move speed reduced from 0.88 to 0.62. I told them to nerf Siege real hard. I think they listened to you, the Merc 07. I think they saw your feedback, the Merc, and uh, they acted on it forthwith. Springled move speed reduced from 1 to 0.88. So I think Culverins were 88. I think Culverins were 88. 
So they're gonna be culverine speed. Oh, bombards were 88. Yeah, they're gonna be bombard speed. These are gonna be even slower. Mangadel move speed reduced from 0.88 to 0.75. Nest of beef from 0.94 to 81. Sif specific changes. Dude, there's more. Exciting. Well, Siege got massively nerfed. I think it's good though. They're not mentioning French cannon weird. Yeah, maybe that one will remain stronger. Or they forgot to list it. This has been a much requested change for Abbasid power level change. Because they can't speed up their aging up, it was always two minutes. And many other Sifs use three to six villagers to go feudal or castle. For castle, it's typically six to 12 villagers. For Imperial, it's somewhere from eight to 20 villagers usually. Uh, and you're gonna get under one minute age up timings and Abyssy could never do that. And while civilization asymmetry is cool, it hit them a little bit too hard. So that's a big buff, 15 seconds change. Very cool. Abbasi Dynasty and Delhi Sultanate. Shared changes. Increased explosive DAO detonation range from one to two tiles, so it matches the intended explosion radius. No wonder, dude, when I tried to use their demo ships, you would be like almost on top. Your bows would be touching and you would explode. And unless it was like absolutely melee, it did nothing. Ah, oh, that makes a lot of sense. So. And DAOs are gonna go up in damage, wow. From eight to 10, that's huge. You're gonna be able to pierce so much more armor now. Nothing about Global Q? Well, Global Q is coming, we know it, right? It's on the ranked beta server. We just don't know if it's gonna make this patch yet, but we know it's coming. Okay, so Abbasid and Delhi are now gonna have the same demo ship and their DAO is getting better. This was the worst arrow ship, right? It's like 10% faster than hulks or something or than enemy galleys, but that was barely enough to outmaneuver people when most maps don't have such big stretches of water and outmaneuvering is kind of overrated on water because you have to defend your sh fishing ships. The Dao was by far the weakest. Cool. Whoa! Delhi buff? Yo, I'm a Delhi main unapologetically. I played them, I played them when they were not cool. But if this is all that's happening, and I know this is premature, we're gonna read the rest. If this is all that's happening, Delhi's gonna be busted. What? What? So this is kind of cool because berries, you always end up walking further and further. I guess you could make closer and closer mills in a way. Isn't that weird? Berry carry capacity goes from 10 to 13. How does that work? What does wheelbarrow do to you? Because let's say you're gathering sheep food, yeah? So you've got 10 food in hand. You've just fully carried sheep carcass meat. Then you click on another sheep. Nothing happens. He wants to go home. He's full. You then click on a berry. You can get three more food. Is that what you're saying? Well, what if you, what if you, yeah. It's interesting. So. I guess, I guess that's how it works. It's not that complicated, I suppose. And then with wheelbarrow, it's going to be plus 50%, which means, uh, I guess, 20? It's going to be up to 20, plus 7. We found many players preferring to take sheep over berries because it saved villager walk time. Our intention is for Delhi and Abbasi to play differently from the start, with an added focus on gathering berries. Yeah, 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 Holy Roman Empire are gonna have 17 from the start of the game. Plus four, right? And a berry harvest bonus. Well, it doesn't say that every Sif will have a better berry capacity. It says these two. Maybe other Sifs can still only carry 10. Holy Roman, not 17. No, no, it's, it's only these two. I would definitely go for an Abbasid opener with berries. Some people are pointing out that Abbasid now does not open berries because they have a slower age up timing when they do, but it's not that hard to get 50 extra wood to afford a house, a mining camp, a lumber camp, and a mill for berries to harvest for it uh, with the trade-off of being just slightly faster food gathering. I think, it, I think it's worth it. 
Chinese clock tower bombard health reduced from 720 to 600. Official units can no longer use supervise on landmarks. Wait, which landmarks were we supervising? Oh! Oh! No! I was like going through every landmark except Clock Tower. <laughs> Lamau, he wasn't supervising Clock Tower. No, I was. It's like becoming aware that you're breathing or that you're walking. It's like, wait, how am I walking? I'm putting one leg in front of the other. Uh... So now we have to actually make siege workshops at one point in the game instead of playing for one and a half hour games with a single workshop because you can pump out bombards 15 seconds each. Keep in mind, you can still do that 15 second bombards. They just won't be clock towered. That's a huge nerf. So, bombard. Bombard is slower. Springled is slower. Nesta is slower. Clock Tower cannot be supervised anymore, and Bombards have less health. So Bombards could have up to 950 health. They had 600, and then, um, let's see, 950 divided by 600 times, uh, wait, 950 divided by 720 times 600. So they're gonna have 800 health max instead of 950 uh, if you go Ming Dynasty and get the siege upgrade and make it from clock tower uh, still good but definitely a nerf and probably deserved I just wonder whether Chinese are still gonna be good oh quadruple nerfed reload drills reload bonus time reduced from 33 to 20 Chinese officials supervising their clock tower means the effective output of the landmark is tripled. You know what this means? We are going to be able to collect more taxes because you no longer have one of your floor officials being on duty to supervise the clock tower. One on food, one on gold, one on wood, one on clock tower. No taxes. You're now going to get more gold. Yay! <laughs> but yeah, quadruple nerf. This level of power was creating less varied and interesting unit compositions as they could make such a large and powerful mass of siege units. We still can, okay? We still can. They're just not going to be clock towered. So, uh, let's see. 400 health. Yeah, it'll be like other sifts then, right? Like, w once you get the health upgrade, you're going to have 500 health clock tires if you want to pump them reload speed reductions are extremely powerful these technologies were some of the highest outputs in the game we've brought them down to be in line with similar unit enhancements like incendiary arrows in chemistry nest of beast damage versus ships increased from zero to four this is bonus damage yeah it's not they now deal four it's eight plus four fix the bug where imperial officials tax collection cooldowns sometimes didn't trigger Ugh. Ooh, wow. Battle Prelate buff. This is gonna make Holy Roman even better on Hill and Dale. Chinese already suffered against Holy Roman Empire. And now with Culverins untouched and all the other siege nerfed and Holy Roman having access to Culverins, and now prelates are faster, so relic retrieval is quicker, and repositioning is quicker. Chinese getting like quintuple nerfed, Delhi and Abbasid getting buffed. Abbasid being the other Hill and Dale uh, civilization. So Hill and Dale is like Holy Roman, then Abbasid, then Chinese. Roughly like these are the three best. So uh, yeah, Chinese is gonna suffer a lot there, and Holy Roman is gonna get a lot better there. They're intended to be repositioned within the economy as well as move with the army to heal and buff units with inspired warriors. Increasing the move speed helps prelates perform both their roles more effectively. So battle prelates, 15% damage in one armor, like inner fire. 
Are we gonna see it more? Let's see. I'm gonna try it out. Wow, inspire cost range increased from three to four. Maybe they already had that on the ranked beta. I wonder. Maybe they already had that because it seemed pretty big. Maybe without knowing it, it was a bigger range, a radius already. Can't believe that was the big buff for ABBA. Well, faster berry gathering rate and a quicker landmark. ABBA seed is actually not that bad. The stories of their weakness are greatly exaggerated. They are lowest win rates, but because of water maps too. ABBA seed gets Dao buff, demo ship buff. Uh, they get lower reliance on siege. They can build them on the field, which means that movement speed actually uh, affects them less. Yeah, All right. Manganel Springles have to be made at home for everyone, but Abbasid can make them at your gate. So that's a buff to Abbasid as well. Uh, and then uh, Abbasid is really good at spamming trash units at late game. And they always get countered by Manganels and Bombards and stuff as well. So that's happy times for them too. Yeah, I'd, I'd say Abbasid has received a number of buffs. I'll be very surprised if Abbasid is bottom two win rates on land maps. I don't think they will be. Especially with Chinese nerf. I think Chinese might be the worst. Oh. We'll see. Chinese are still very flexible and complex. So there may still be... Uh, people... I, th I, st I still think people may need months more to become much better at Chinese. Mongol. Several changes made to adjust raid. Um, Mongols getting lots of resources for bursting enemy buildings allows them to snowball an early lead with no hope of comeback. Getting resources from burning a building allows the Mongols to create more troops to burn more buildings. So this was already active on the ranked beta patch server that went down uh, about a week ago, right? That was up a week ago. This was already true, 25-25. Then when you upgrade it, it took it to 75. Now when you upgrade it, you double it to 50. The improved upgrade to take it to 100 has been removed from the OVU. Oh, no, no, sorry has now become 75 okay high armory technology fine-tuned guns reload bonus time reduced from 33 to 20. is this the mangonel reload speed also when a mangonel hit on eight farms it was 800 food 800 gold yeah that's crazy oh this is for bombards as well oh, okay okay yeah so in line with the Chinese change. And that's it. What's next? Within the last two patches, we've been focused on responding to many of the prominent balance and book related elements you told us would most improve your experience with AOE4. Following this patch, we'll be keeping an eye out for your feedback to better understand what other changes we might bring into play prior to our spring update, referenced in the community roadmap here. The team's also monitoring matchmaking wait times and investigating additional steps to further improve this experience across skill levels and offer competitive opponents without prolonged waiting times. For those of you who were able to join us in the ranked seasons preview last week, thanks. You're welcome. We deeply appreciate your time and feedback as we prepare to introduce one-on-one -on -one ranked seasons. We hope you and others enjoyed an early view of some of the quality of life features included in the preview as well. We're still refining these elements and really enjoyed seeing them in use. Crocdog said, well played AOE 14. We salute you for your efforts. Amen, man. Finally, we wanted to answer a question we've heard a few times. Namely, will Age of Empires 4 have a public update preview? The answer... A public update preview? Who asked that? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> The answer is yes. We'll be continuing the journey. We'll be continuing the journey. The definitive uh, edition title started and providing early access. Oh, the PTR, yeah. Okay, okay. I was asking that. But we just had one. What do you mean we'll have? We just had one. <laughs> we'll have more details to share later this month regarding the timing of our first public update preview, as well as our goals with the program. This will be public for everyone. Ah, it was not public. Yeah, it was insider only. Well, that's good. It made no sense. It's only for insiders. Cool, that's it. Well, um, I, st I, I think there's a few things missing. Uh, Mongol Khan nerf, like uh, in particular, uh, 
H, like Dark Age Mongol killing sheep by just clicking sheep and then looking away for 15 seconds. Um, chasing a scout and killing sheep. I think that's a problem. I think his range in ages is a problem. And Castle Age is a problem as well in, in that how much range and damage and health he has. He's just killing villagers in like four shots. I think that's a problem. Many others are hard to oversee. I think Chinese are going to be a little bit weak. Animation cancel is going to be going away. Rus might be a little weaker, maybe even weak. Just just a thought. Uh, it's going to affect night civilizations because of animation cancel's removal. Arguably one of the biggest changes in the entire patch. So French knight spam is not going to kill spears anymore by animation cancelling it's not going to be as good in general you're not going to see large armies of knights like constantly doing like this weird jittery dance in order to maximize dps it will affect holy roman who are spamming knights off of a fast castle age with relic retrieval uh, it's going to affect of course um, um mongols who rush to castle age after being in dark ages for six minutes they get castle age in eight minutes and then spam lancers and it's going to affect Divine FTP a lot. <laughs> As we knew, that's all he does. Um, you know, mass, mass Lancers and Animation Council. Now, so th there are many, many good changes. I think Mongol Khan is an issue still, like I said. But, arguably, and it hurts me to betray my own Civ, I think Delhi is going to be the best. So let's do a tier list off the back of this as well. And that's going to be a next video, but that's the end of this patch, up, patch notes video. Uh, enjoy, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, for more Age of Empires 4 content, including guides, tips and tricks, builds and whatnot, definitely subscribe to this channel and leave your comments for the algorithm. I actually read them all. If you see the little heart, that means I've read your comment. I pretty much heart every comment on YouTube that I've read because I want to be in tune with what you guys are thinking and saying and stuff. I only skip like terrible comments i will have still read it if you are like not hearted in a sea of comments that i just hearted then i disagree with your comment okay cool i uh, see you next video peace